Hi everyone, Bandana here and welcome to this week's Warner Dev Vlog. This week it's another Army General Preview, this time it's the Castle Axis. They give their usual welcome to everybody, but I'm going to skip over that and I'm going to skip over Army General Explain because if you're here, you've probably seen Army General before or know a little bit about it anyway, so I don't think we need to explain what it is again. However, a quick reminder that previously we had a dev blog on the Frankfurt Axis and we've also had the news that we are getting co-op and versus for the Army General campaigns. Okay, with that said, let's move on to Airborne Assault, the first of the Castle Axis campaigns. So the first shots of the war happen on the Castle Axis, specifically the Castle Calden Airport, which is seized in a daring but risky covert operation by Soviet and East German Special Forces before daybreak. With more and more Soviet VDV air assault troops being ferried in, an airhead is established in the rear of NATO's West German 2nd Panzer Grenadier Division in the northern sector of Sentag. You can see this in their intro video that's running in the background. Anyhow, with Sentag's attention focused on the Fulda Gap, the communist threat on this part of the front was considered secondary by NATO command. Call it faulty intelligence, Soviet misdirection or complacency, at dawn, a massive artillery bombardment and continuous aerial strikes descend on the Bundeswehr forces in the castle sector. Arrayed in front of the NATO defense is the Soviet First Guards Tank Army, a powerful force keen on joining up with the friendly paratroopers. For the hard-pressed Bundeswehr defenders, the communists seem to attack from all sides. A Warsaw Pact breakthrough threatens to rip a dangerous gap between NATO commands, bisecting the lines of communication between the north and south of West Germany. The Airborne Assault or Castle Calden mission also reflects the use of elite special forces and saboteur squads with inspiration drawn from Soviet Operation Storm 333 in 1979. The next subheading is Airborne Assault Insights. In this campaign, unlike Bruderkrieg or Fulda Gap, NATO starts with an entire division. The Bundeswehr's 2nd Panzer Grenadier Division already deployed. Some additional smaller formations are on the map as well. However, the West German brigades are spread out, while some require a few turns before they are ready to move. The Warsaw Pact forces are all Soviets except for a single National Volksarmee battalion. Their attack on Kassel and Göttingen is full on. A key aspect of the campaign is the communist coup de main behind NATO lines smack in the middle of the 2nd Panzer Grenadier Division's deployment area. The West German mechanized infantry is torn between performing two missions at the onset of the pact invasion, safeguarding Sentag's flank at Fritzlar in the south or maintaining a vital link with Northag in the east. Not only that, they need to muster forces as soon as possible to crush those pesky paratroopers, sowing chaos in the rear. Aside from a single advanced Belgian recon battalion, the only help Sentag can spare is support from the US Air Force and the Luftwaffe Air Squadrons. Having to focus on two different combat missions while the full weight of the invading Soviet First Guards tank army bears down on you, NATO is clearly stuck between a rock and a hard place. They have a little subheading here, Market Garden Revisited. For the Warsaw Pact, the situation on the ground echoes a market garden style operation. A pocket of paratroopers is isolated behind NATO lines and needs to be relieved by friendly armored forces trying to break through the enemy front line as soon as possible. As long as the communists hold on to Castle Calton Airport and thus maintain their air bridge, fresh battalions from the 35th Guards Air Assault Brigade will be fed into it. This increases your chance of holding on to the pocket and maybe even increasing its size. However, the paratroopers are lightly equipped and armed and will have a difficult time standing against a concerted attack. On the ground, the 20th Guards Motor Rifles Division is supported by an armoured regiment from the 9th Tank Division, as well as independent helicopter and Spetsnaz forces. This is a powerful formation, but it has to break through the West German defences near Kassel urban sector, and then split between two distant objectives, either Diemelstadt in the east or Fritzlar in the south. Not an easy task. And that's everything for that Army General campaign. We move on now to Left Hook Insights. The initial Soviet offensive on Kassel didn't create the breakthrough envisioned by High Command but did result in a large salient in the NATO lines. The fighting has been hard for both sides and after a momentary pause more and more units are being deployed. The front is far from stable. A new phase in the war begins around Kassel after four days of intense fighting. 
Success for the Warsaw Pact can only come from seizing their objectives. While NATO needs to defend tooth and nail both West German territory and their allies on the battlefield. Again, the video is playing in the background. A regrouped and reinforced Soviet First Guards tank army will push again and try to break out of the Castle Bulge. The objective is Dortmund. However, unlike the chaotic first hours of the war, NATO has rallied. Under British command, the Belgian 1st BE Corps is being deployed with additional British units. The Bundeswehr is also reforming. As such, both sides are planning their own counterattacks. I have a lot of weird connections to Dortmund, so this will be quite an interesting one for me. And obviously the British were stationed there, so off we go to save the day again. Anyhow, back to the dev blog. So both sides see the stakes raised in left hook. NATO did not collapse as easily as predicted by the Soviet high command, while the Soviet army was far from being a spent force with vast number of soldiers and equipment still available to resume the attack. The next subheading is left hook insights. This larger campaign takes place a few days after the airborne assault campaign. Castle has fallen. The heavily mauled 2nd Panzer Grenadier Division pushed back towards Northag. This isolates the West German formation from its parent Bundeswehr Third Corps in Sentag. However, the Soviets have failed to achieve a decisive breakthrough. The timely intervention of the British Brigade plugged the line and is holding along the Demo River. The battle that was depicted in Warno's Operation Hold Until Relieved, linking the two Army General campaigns. This has given NATO critical time to regroup and reorganize. While most of the forces from the airborne assault have suffered losses, the Soviet First Guards Tank Army and Northag are fielding reinforcements. For NATO, this means the whole Belgian 1st BE Corps, plus the British 3rd Armoured Division and other smaller formations. The pact fields the additional 9th and 11th Guards Tank Divisions. Both sides plan to launch a new offensive to regain the initiative before the opponent can launch their own operations. The Belgians were initially only meant to be featured as a teaser for the future Northag expansion, but they ended up being added in strength to represent almost half the campaign's NATO forces. Other units will be featured more as cameos, including a strategic choice that lets you deploy the heavy Buccaneer bombers. And that is everything for this week. Thank you very much for joining me once more. Please, as ever, like, share and subscribe, and I'll see you all soon for some more Warno.